Welcome to another episode of TPJ Television. In this episode, we're in New Berlin, Wisconsin to learn about bending from Sharp Products owner, Paul Krickerberg. One of Sharp's most unique machines is its Nissen bender. It allows Sharp to use one set of tooling to make bends of any radius. Here's a part that we produced on a Nissen bender that is a good example. This machine has a CNC control. Uh, what makes it unique, it, this is run by a tube that is pushed through a ceramic ring that as long as we have the tooling for that size, and we currently have three quarter inch one and one and a quarter inch tooling, as long as we have that tooling, we can do any radius. For example, this is a three quarter inch tube. As long as we have a three, di three times the diameter radius on this part, which in this case would be a two and a quarter, as long as it's that radius or larger, we're able to bend this part on this bender without any straights between the bends that you need in current bend er, in rotary bending. We're able to go from one radius right into another one without any straights. Uh, this part, as you see as an example, has about five different radiuses on with no straight between. We were able to make this part for the customer two days after they ordered it without any tooling charge. The customer told us that they, other uh, suppliers or vendors were telling them approximately $20,000 worth of tooling and 12 weeks to get this part. The other unique part about this is because of the way it works, we lay the tube in here and the tube is rammed, rammed through the ceramic ring and the computer controls the radius as it's coming out. Uh, so other advantages that are, besides the tooling, there's very little part marking on the, on the tube because the only part that's really touching this tube is the ceramic ring. So you get a real uh, mark-free part. There's no oil inside of the tube while it's being bent. So that also saves a lot on the cleaning of a part. A lot of times we spend as much time cleaning a part as we do bending it because of the oil that's inside with the conventional types of bending. For speed and economy, fabricators often use compression bending. This particular machine is a twin head compression bender. This machine has capabilities of up to inch and a half diameter. It's normally used uh, for the speed in, in cases like a generator frame that you've seen bent, where the roundness of the bend is not as important. It's more about economics and, and getting the best price on the uh, tube. Also used uh, a lot in furniture industry. Um, uh, lawnmower handles, things like that where the roundness of the tube is not important. Again, it's very price competitive, it's important. Uh, some of the, besides the speed, some of the advantages are, like the Nissan bender, there's no oil inside the part, there's no mandrel inside of the tube, and that's why you're getting the bend a little bit more all around. So there's no cleaning of the part needed afterwards. Um, but the speed, in, in this current, in this bender, we can also, they do not have to be a symmetrical part. This part you saw here was all 90 degree bends and a symmetrical part. We can set this to, to do a 90 on one side, a 45 on the other side, uh, so the part does not have to be symmetrical. Uh, Let's take a look at one of the bends. Let's see here if this bend, if this outer onus is acceptable, in most cases, generator frames and, and furniture, that is not a problem. This would be the bender to use. You do need approximately uh, two times the diameter of the tube to bend it in the case. This is a one inch tube bent on a two and a half inch center line. You do need on a one inch tube at least a two inch center line to get an acceptable bend quality. One of the most common forms of bending is rotary draw bending. This type of bending requires a lot more tooling. Uh, it's normally used when you're bending a tube three to four times or less to the center line radius of the diameter of the tube. Uh, requires a lot of tooling. We start off, you always, there's three pieces of tooling that are always needed in this type of bending. You always need a bend die, which you're, is cut out for the tube diameter you're bending, to the radius you'd like to bend. This is what, bend, what it bends around and gives it the end part the radius you're, that you're looking for. You always need a, a clamp die, which comes in against the clamp to do the bend, against the bend die, and actually holds the tube while it's putting the bend on. Also, this is the pressure die that, as you're bending the tube, keeps applies the pressure to the back of the tube so as it's doing the bend, the, the part would naturally want to kick out. So it actually puts the pressure to the back of the tube and follows along as it's bending the tube. Those three pieces of tooling are always needed to do a ro rotary draw bend. In some cases, if you're bending something thin wall, tighter radius, there's three other pieces of tooling you may need. You may need the mandrel to go inside the tube, which keeps the tube round as you're bending it. In this case, you can see there's a quite a few balls on here because we're bending a piece of four and a half inch thin wall tubing. The, the number of balls are all determined on what radius you're bending and how thick the tubing is that you're bending. Also the wiper die. The wiper die is normally needed if you're bending tight thin wall. 
What this does is prevent the ripples in the tube. Normally when you bend a piece of tube, you have the material gathering on the inside radius and you're gonna end up with a large lump at the end or ripples. So this piece of tooling here, that's why they call it a wiper. It actually wipes the material, that lump, away as it gets further away from the, the bend. It, it pretty much wipes out that bump or that, those ripples. Uh, the sixth piece of tooling you may need is a collet, which holds a piece of tube. You need a collet for the tube size that you're bending. That's usually used when you're doing more than one bend on a part. That will hold the tube, and as it bends the tube, that tube, that collet will hold the tube and push it forward, rotate it to the right position to get it ready for the next bend. Most bending machines bend either left-handed or right-handed, but some bending machines are fitted out to bend both directions. Another bending machine is the angle roller. This particular machine is outfitted with round tooling for handling tube and pipe. This machine goes up to inch and a half pipe, and it is normally used to roll channels and angles. We do very little of that, so we use this to roll pipe and tube. It's normally, this process is used when you have approximately at least eight times the diameter of the tube that you're rolling. So if you're rolling an inch and a half tube, when you get to a 12 inch radius or larger, this is the machine you could, you'd want to go with. It's not very expensive to tool up. Um, you got three rollers that you need to have cut off for the tube size that you're rolling. It's basically, when you put the roll in here, when you put the tube in here, by how much pressure you have on the middle roll here, as it rolls through, that will determine your radius. We've covered four bending processes here today, rotary draw bending, compression bending, roll bending, and the freeform bending with the Nissen bender. For more information on other bending processes, visit our website, www.thefabricator.com, and search for bending articles there. TPJ TV would like to thank our host, Paul Krickerberg, and the entire staff at Sharp Products for hosting us today. See you next time on TPJ TV.